This is just a Honda with blue plastics, I promise, but it still looks pretty cool, doesn't it? I wanted to do something a little bit different with this build. I just recently picked up a Yamaha YZ250F as my personal bike and said, you know what, let's make a mini version of this while still sticking with the sought after fuel injected Honda over the TTR. In this video, you're gonna see the whole build process from start to finish, all the different mods and parts that we put on this thing, the total cost, and you'll actually get to see me ride and race this rocket ship. It is fast, I promise. Let's get started. When building a pit bike, why only have one when you can have two? Let me explain. Bike A is a 2021 mint bone stock 110 with low hours, the perfect candidate for any build. Bike B is a 2019 not so mint 110 with a lot more hours on it, but here's the kicker. This bike has over $1,700 worth of upgrades. Take all the parts from bike B, swap them with bike A, resell bike B, and just like that, we got ourselves $1,700 worth of free parts. Work smarter, not harder. Well, I guess I'm working smarter and harder, but... This is a lot of pit bike parts. Now that we got everything kind of laid out here, this is a perfect opportunity where I can go through and figure out all the different parts that I want to kind of trade between the two bikes. That way we can get them all cleaned up and start the process of getting these bikes back together. Onto the wheels, it is time to get these things torn apart. We're gonna be sending the rims over to my buddy Garrett to get powder coated. Now I would have loved to try to match the blue on my big bike with these, but I was a little bit worried about matching up the color, so we're gonna stick with just a gloss black. I also decided I wanted to add a rim lock on the front and rear wheels, so what we're doing here is just drilling a hole about 180 degrees from the valve stem, just enough so that rim lock will fit through there. Essentially what this is gonna do is eliminate or at least lower the chances of the tire ever slipping on the wheel. For the suspension on this bike, we're gonna be running BBR heavy duty springs and dampening rods in the front, and then we're gonna be running the DNM 350 pound shock in the rear. Both of these things we were able to swap over with the other bike, so we're gonna go ahead, pull all the internals out of the forks, drain them, put all new fluid in there. We're gonna replace the seals on the other bike because those were actually leaking a little bit. And as you can see, there's actually a pretty big length difference. We're talking about an inch and a half to two inches between the stock damping rods and the BBR damping rods. So now that we got the front done, moving on to the rear, it is simple as just unbolting and swapping the shocks out. Now you do have to grind a little bit on the frame for the DNM shock to fit, but once you do that, everything else just lines up. The spring and everything is obviously stiffer and then it's actually a little bit longer so it increases the ride height in the back just a little bit. So onto the motor and trying to get a little bit more power out of this bike. I know there's a lot of stuff you can do but I didn't wanna do anything past just bolt on mods. So we ended up taking the TB132 big bore kit and the oversized intake from the other bike and then I got a hold of CJR Performance and he really hooked me up. He actually sent me over a 26 millimeter throttle body and the whole intake manifold and everything to hook it up. And then also, anytime you do any kind of work on these bikes, even if it's an exhaust, you have to get the ECU you know, remapped to your specific tune. So he sent me over this DinoJet PowerVision with my tune automatically installed on here. I plugged this thing in, I uploaded it, and reflashed that ECU. So this thing is all set. He promises it's gonna be a rocket ship and I don't think he's gonna be wrong. So I've linked to him down in the description if you guys wanna check him out or if you wanna do any work on your bikes and you need your ECU tuned, you guys can send it to him and he will hook you up.
got that other bike put all back together, photos taken. It actually cleaned up really, really nice. I got it listed on Facebook for sale. Now, if you guys remember, we paid $2,500 for it with all those extra parts and I just ended up selling it for $2,600. So we're actually up $100 plus all those parts. I call that a total win. Let's keep working. The other bike had a really nice skid plate and shifter that I wanna use, but they're worn and it's starting to fade. It kind of looks like pink. Long story short, I just want these things to be bare aluminum. I did some research and you can actually remove the anodizing from the metal. I've never done this before. We're gonna give it a shot. Wish me luck. We're using this easy off heavy duty oven cleaner. We're just spraying this stuff on, letting it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes, spraying and wiping it off and just repeating this three or four times until all the color is gone. Look how good this stuff looks. I am blown away with how well this worked. I mean, you can't even tell that there was a color on here. This stuff looks brand new. A little bit messy, so I recommend keeping it in a tub, but overall, I'm extremely satisfied with how this stuff turned out. This Pro Circuit T6 exhaust was in really good shape, but we wanted to take it over to the Scotch bright wheels on the bench grinder really shine this thing up it's gonna be looking awesome Peg bar is from Diamond Minis. They are in the UK and I kid you not, I ordered this thing and in three days it showed up on my doorstep. I was blown away. Next up, we gotta add some color, some bling to this build and I found this company called Lux Billet that offers a ton of different products in this bronze Cerakote color, which I think is gonna look amazing. Lux Billet actually specially Cerakoted some of these parts for me, so a huge thank you to those guys. I've linked to them down in the description if you're interested in picking up some parts for your pit bike. I cannot recommend these guys enough. This brake lever looks looks awesome. It is a super high quality and very easy to install. The best product that they have is this universal kickstand mount. You know how many times you buy a heavy duty peg bar and they don't have your kickstand? Essentially, this thing just clamps onto here, tightens down. You can put your OEM stock kickstand back on. But since I went with a higher suspension in the rear, I actually picked up Lux's extended kickstand. This thing mounts right up. It's in the Cerakote bronze, matches the rest of it. I am so excited and super happy with this product. Up in the cockpit area, we're going for the Pro Taper XR50 bars and for the lever we're using an ASV CS6 lever. This is an extremely nice lever that I actually got for like 20 bucks off my buddy. I would have never paid full retail for this thing. The rims are back from getting powder coated and Garrett did a great job. These things look amazing. So now it's time to get them laced up with some BBR heavy duty spokes. We were able to steal these almost brand new Dunlop MX33s from that other bike. So let's get these things mounted up on these fresh wheels. running a BBR tall seat on here, which is perfect, but this red cover has got to go because we're trying to match my big bike. So I reached out to Moto Seat and they got me a custom cover with the blue on top, the black on sides. This thing is gonna be perfect. This thing is looking so good, but it is time for plastics and graphics to really pull the whole look all together. We went with the Acherby's Blue Plastics Kit and Core Moto for the graphics. I've linked to them down in the description. They do all my other builds along with my big bike, and this is just an exact replica of that kit. Real quick, I just wanna go over all the parts and the total cost for this bike. I'm gonna throw all the parts on the screen. If you guys are interested and wanna read through them, just go ahead and pause the video. I'm gonna jump right into the cost. I'm gonna start with the total MSRP cost. So this is if you'd pay full price for everything. With the bike included with a price of 2750, our total MSRP cost is $6,000. $40.96. That is a lot of money just for a pit bike. These things can get really expensive. Now that's not what I paid after all the free parts I got from that one bike, the money I made selling the other bike, and then some of the discounts I had. My total cost out of pocket was $3,264.02.
one last thing we got to do, and that is to ride this thing. There's a local pit bike race going on this weekend that we're signed up for, and there's no better way to break this thing in than to go racing. So that's what we're going to do. Here we go. Gotta have the burger gloves. jump a little too fast and I kind of just fell down and then got ran over. was so much fun to race ride and build and bring you guys along for the whole series if you guys want to check out some of my other build series make sure to click here and as always thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one